Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, and welcome to our very first Division of Music uh, visit day at Indiana Wesleyan University. Uh, to kick things off, uh, please welcome our division chair, uh, Professor Michael Flanagan. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Flanagan. I am the division chair here at Indiana Wesleyan University, and I'm excited uh, that that you're going to be a part of our Spotlight Day festivities. In the past, this would be over two days, and we would have a Sunday portion and a, and a Monday portion. This year, uh, because of the pandemic, we're going to do today virtually, and we are excited about this. This is a chance to meet students, faculty, uh, and tour our buildings. Even if you are coming tomorrow, this gives you a leg up, gives you an opportunity to become more familiar with us. Uh, if you're not coming tomorrow, I still encourage you to, to um, audition, send things in. We, we hope to, to even see you on campus if possible, uh, but you can contact us and we can talk about that. But in this presentation, you're going to see some nice facilities. You're going to see great faculty. Believe me, great faculty. Um, and that is all well and good. I hope you understand that even more importantly than this, than, than those items is uh, you'll get to see faith. Our faith is what makes this institution special. I've been here for 20 years and it is a wonderful place to be. And I'm blessed to come to work in a great environment where we have a, a great building and, and different buildings. And uh, it is terrific. Um, among very special colleagues and students, but more importantly, I get to do that and, and serve the same purpose. We all serve the same purpose. And that's to honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, this afternoon. And I look forward to meeting uh, many of you tomorrow as, as you come to campus. And then uh, I look forward to meeting all of you sometime. So I hope you have a great afternoon and can enjoy this. Thanks, Professor Flanagan. Uh, as way of introduction, I am Professor Davey Chin. I am the uh, choral guy at Indiana Wesleyan, and I will be your virtual guide today um, for this virtual event. Uh, the primary elements of this event are tours of the facilities, like Mr. Flanagan said. You're also going to see our faculty highlighted in performances. There will be several performance videos uh, by many of our faculty, not all, but many. And you will also uh, get to meet some of our students at the end. So to kick things off, uh, we're going to switch over to some performances of some of our faculty, and we're going to start with Dr. Jason Thompson. He is our violin teacher and our orchestra director. He also teaches music history and oversees the string program in general here. Uh, he is going to be playing Libertango by Astor Piazzolla, and he's accompanied by another one of our faculty members um, who you will meet again a little later, Dr. Daniel Lin. So please enjoy this performance of Piazzolla's Libertango. Thank you. 
was Dr. Jason Thompson playing Astor Piazzolla's Libertango, accompanied by Dr. Daniel Lin. We have two full-time piano faculty, uh, one you just met, and the other one is Dr. Phoenix Park Kim, whom you're about to hear from. Uh, she also teaches piano pedagogy, piano literature, along with Dr. Lin, they co-teach those classes. Um, they also teach the class piano courses, which almost every single student who comes to our division will take at some point. So up next is Dr. Phoenix Park Kim playing Florence Price's Clouds. That again was Dr. Phoenix Park Kim playing Clouds by Florence Price. In addition to teaching classes uh, relating to piano, Dr. Phoenix Park Kim also oversees our accompanying program. One of the really special things about our division is that every single lesson that requires an accompanist, an accompanist is provided. At many institutions, if you need an accompanist for your voice lessons or your violin lessons or your flute lessons, you have to pay for that. But here at Indiana Wesleyan, we provide those for you. We have uh, four staff accompanists and we also have student accompanists that uh, play for every lesson. 
Next, we're going to go on a tour of the Philippi Performing Arts Center. This is the main hub, our home for the Division of Music at Indiana Wesleyan University. This tour is given by our division chair, Mr. Michael Flanagan, so you know you're getting all of the facts. Uh, this is an awesome building that has been our home since 1996 when it first opened. Hopefully you will enjoy this tour. Uh, it's not quite the same in video, so hopefully you do get to come out and see it in person sometime uh, in the near future. Welcome everyone to uh, Indiana Wesleyan University. You are in the Philippi Performing Arts Center, and uh, which is where the, we house the Division of Music. So we're going to take you around a little bit to see uh, different places. start this is this is right outside the music office and this entrance uh, across the way we have our chapel auditorium but we are headed into the recital hall let's come in this direction this room seats 180 as you can see right now it seats a little less because of covid restrictions that's what these white things are we keep the the um mount down for right now it does have a control room in the back we can do some very fine recording in here uh, we can show um, uh, video in here as well as you can see one of our two nine foot Steinway grand pianos um, and this is a room that we use a ton for different recitals departmental recitals senior recitals things like that very uh, fine um, room for that We'll head this direction. This is for individuals before they go to their recital. There's a dressing room back there, a restroom for them as well. Uh, it's a nice little area to prepare. <laughs> this is the uh, instrumental rehearsal room. Uh, we use this for so many different things, including some choral activities, but we have uh, right now uh, some things going on with the, with the percussion, um, if you'll see out right there, but we do rehearse uh, band, we rehearse orchestra, and we rehearse um, actually some of the choirs in here. Um, so it can be used in so many different ways. Uh, it's also a classroom for, for many things like uh, techniques courses, string techniques, woodwind techniques, things like that. gets used for many different things as well as classroom space, uh, conducting classrooms, things like that. So uh, very, uh, very used space. Um, again, we have three choirs and so they will use this room. We sometimes use the band room. Uh, and right now because of COVID, we're using different stages uh, because of just the amount of room we can put people in. So that is what's going on here. We have our music library over here. And then um, it's one of our many practice rooms. This is a, is a room in which, uh, if you've ever heard of uh, VAE or virtual acoustic environment, you can actually set it up to where it sounds like you're in a major concert hall or you're in a small um, recital hall and it changes the sound to mimic what it would be if you were in there. It's a really neat uh, feature and if somebody's getting ready for a, a recital or something to come in here and perform is really helpful they, so they can hear things like they will hear it in a performance. This one 
feet, uh, about 12 perimeters. Welcome to the Philippines. This again, you'll see those white uh, white seat covers. Those let people know where they can sit to be spaced correctly. So that's why they're used currently. Um, in the future, we hope they're not here. But it normally seats about 1,200 people. This right here is our um, is our pit. So it lowers, and it is a very nice size pit. Um, it's a lot of Times they're not that large. This one's a very good size and works very well for our performances that we hold in here. Um, we typically stage an opera uh, every other year, a full scale opera and a full scale musical. So they switch back and forth from year to year. Uh, so we're excited about um, our upcoming musical in here, be Once Upon a Mattress. Um, we have done many others. Our big, biggest production as of late was Guys and Dolls. Uh, but we've done many others as well in this facility. It's a wonderful room for uh, symphonic concert music, uh, choral music. It, it just really works well. And as you can see, it, it seats uh, a lot of people and, and there's really not a bad place to sit. It's a, acoustically, you should feel things very well. So you see, we have a, a hallway with classrooms here. heavily used uh, and again we are at a point where some of these are closed off you might see signs on different ones because they keep them spaced out specifically for uh, COVID restrictions but typically we have 14 in these classes and uh, every every music student will go through some sort of piano class most of our faculty are housed in on this hallway this is where you take uh, your lessons you'll be with them. Uh, every room has a uh, piano in it. Uh, most of them have grand pianos, and then if you're uh, taking lessons from a piano teacher, there'll be two grand pianos in those rooms. That's Debbie That's Myers. That's Debbie Myers. <laughs> oh, no. A wonderful accompanist extraordinaire. Uh, also known as the Debbie Myers. <laughs> That's right. We're yeah. going to walk through a classroom that's going on right now that um, uh, our computer lab. This is the music office. Uh, our secretary, which you'll probably meet on Monday if you're here, is Lori. Uh, she's not here today, but she will be here. She's normally here. Back to where we started, there's one thing else we want to do, and that's go through our, um, uh, our practice room. There are 18 practice rooms, all with uh, pianos. Um, you'll see some percussion instruments that get brought in or pushed into the room, depending on what it is. Building is open from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. 
We're going to switch now to hear some more performances. We've heard from some of our instrumental faculty, so it's time, I think, to hear from our vocal faculty. Um, our, two of our voice faculty, Dr. Lisa Moore and Dr. Tammy Huntington, uh, combined to create an ensemble with Dr. Phoenix Park Kim called Soprani Compagni. It's a soprano duet with piano accompaniment. And they have traveled all over the world performing soprano repertoire. They have also commissioned several composers to create duets specifically for sopranos. Uh, so in this video, you are going to hear them perform uh, By Night When Others Soundly Slept by David Horace Davies. And just as a quick word of note, you'll notice they're not wearing masks and there is an audience uh, that is coughing in the video. This video was filmed before the COVID-19 pandemic hit.
And that again is Soprani Compagni, which is two of our voice faculty. Dr. Lisa Moore was on the left and Dr. Tammy Huntington was on the right and Dr. Phoenix Park Kim playing the piano. As Mr. Flanagan said earlier, faculty are one of the great things about the Division of Music. Having been a former student in this division, I can say that that's 100% true. Not only are they great people who are really awesome teachers and wonderful to work with, but they are experts. They're performers, they are authors, they are researchers, they are uh, actively involved in the craft of music making, music teaching, and music therapy. Speaking of music therapy, up next we're going to hear from our music therapy faculty and I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Rebecca Barnard and I am the program director for the music therapy degree at Indiana Wesleyan University. And I'm Karen Miller. I'm also a music therapy professor and the clinical coordinator for music therapy. One of the things we really pride ourselves on with our program is the idea of family. Uh, family within the music division, but also family within our degree program. So when it came to finding a song to do for this project, we wanted one that would reflect that particular feel. So the song you're about to hear is Finding Home by Ricky Ian Gordon. Um, I uh, am doing the vocals and Prof uh, Karen Miller is doing the piano. Um, the pictures that you're gonna see were actually given to me by our students. Um, they wanted to help and be part of showing everyone exactly what that family means to them. So I hope you'll enjoy finding home. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We're happy to talk to you anytime. Thank you. Thanks to Prof. Barnard and Prof. Miller for uh, sharing that uh, video montage with us. 
Music therapy is our largest major in our division of music. Uh, and not only do we teach well, uh, we also provide an, op uh, an opportunity for members of our community to receive uh, music therapy sessions. Uh, and we have a special facility, one of our three Division of Music facilities, uh, just for that. So we're going to take you on a quick tour of that facility, which is right across the uh, parking lot from the Philippi Performing Arts Center. This is a quick tour of our music therapy clinic. Hello, I'm Rebecca Barnard, and I am the Director of Music Therapy here at Indiana Wesleyan, and today I get to show you one of my favorite spots on campus that you're not going to see on a normal Ivy tour. And that's right this way. It's our Music Therapy Clinic. So we're located over in the Art Building, right across from the um, Philippi Performing Arts Center. So this used to be a study room, and they made it into a therapy clinic for us so that we can serve the community. So this has been a great place for our students to have, um, to be able to practice their music therapy skills, and also a great way for us to reach out to the community. So first thing you come into is our waiting area, and then I'll show you the therapy room. This is our therapy, our therapy room. You'll notice it's big space, so we've got lots of room for not only individual clients, but also for big groups. So we've got places to move around, we've got places to bring chairs in. We see clients of all ages, so we've got clients as young as um, four or five, and all the way up to clients in their 70s and 80s, um, as well as groups from around Marion. So um, fully stacked, we've got our ukuleles on the wall, we've got our, our instruments in the closet, we're all set to go. Clients who come, they especially love looking at themselves in the mirror. Um, what a lot of them don't realize is that's a one-way mirror. So let's go over to the next room and I'll show you what the observation room looks like. Some of your clients have figured out that this room's here, but most of them have not. So a way to turn the lights off, lights off so that you can see. So this is our observation side. So we've got um, have been able to recently install a nice sound system so you can hear what's going on in there. It's a great place for parents and caregivers to be able to see and observe what's going on in the session without actually being in the session. Uh, it also allows our students and undergrads who may not be doing the practicum yet um, to be able to watch and get an idea of what it's going to look like when they come to class. So that is our clinic. I'm so excited that you're looking at Indiana Wesleyan. And feel free to contact if you have any questions. Thank you. In addition to our 14 full-time faculty, we also have several adjunct faculty who teach classes and private studio lessons, uh, including our flute professor, Professor Donna Wilson, and our trumpet professor, Dr. Joshua Ganger. And you're going to hear back-to-back -back performances from them. Up first, Professor Donna Wilson playing Farewell. Thank <laughs> you. 
And that again was Dr. Joshua Ganger on the trumpet and before him, Professor Donna Wilson on the flute. Dr. Ganger was accompanied by Dr. Sylvia Siak, another one of our staff accompanists here. And that was Franz Joseph Haydn's uh, trumpet concerto in E flat major, the second movement. If you're a trumpet player and you like to play the trumpet, not just Haydn, but at football games, then we have good news for you. We're starting a marching band, which you've probably heard by now. This coming fall will be our first season with our marching wildcats. And we're very excited that our brand new facility has just been completed. Uh, and so we're going to take you on a quick little tour of our brand new marching band facility with our brand new marching band instructor, Professor Brianna Blankenship. Hi, come on in and welcome. 
This is the Color Guard rehearsal area. We've got a nice front dance floor. We have new mirrors to help with choreography. Um, the space will also be utilized for some conducting classes and some choreography clinics um, and things of that nature. watch video of past performances, um, watch drills, and anything that we might need to take care of in here. We have lots of storage in here. Um, we'll have a vending machine, we'll have an ice machine, we also have bathrooms available. We've got a big screen up along the wall. Um, and we've got speakers embedded in the ceiling all across the room, and it'll be a re just a really great thing. It might not look like a ton to you, uh, but that's really exciting for us. That's a really exciting move for us to be able to add a marching band and have that new facility, which is just a short walk from the Philippi Performing Arts Center, uh, six, seven minutes, uh, eight if you walk slow. In addition to the classical Western music that you hear and have heard so far today, we also have contemporary music in our division. Uh, most notably, our songwriting program, which is one of our newer majors, and that's headed up by Dr. Todd Suswerda, who also heads up our composition program and works a lot in theory. I'm going to let him share about his song that he wrote. Uh, this is Dr. Todd Suswerda. Hi, I'm Todd Suswerda, and I oversee music composition and songwriting here at Indiana Wesleyan. And I just want to perform a little song for you, something I wrote last year that seems just as appropriate today as it did with the day I wrote it. Look around, so many people burn the flame of panic while others fan it. And that sound, it's not their screams of pain, but of confusion and disillusion. Everybody's searching for an answer to their problems, but not asking how they got them in the first place. But how do you define insane? It's this rat race. Look around. The other half is living all complacent. Why won't they face it? They are found. Their tails in the air. Their heads are buried. So sick of caring. They just turn away and say, what seems to be the problem? Don't you know if you forgot them, they would be erased. Thinking they'll avoid the pain of just taking up this space. Where's the in-between? I'm not intending to be mean, but I'm just tired. I'm tired of extremes and vile tweets and empty memes, all uninspired and undesired. Searching for balance and perspective from someone reflective. Common ground, why can't that be the point of our beginning? Please stop the spinning. Stop the pointing fingers and the blaming for our problems. If we tried, I bet we'd solve them working face to face. How we move from here is plain. Just give a little grace. 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 Dr. Todd Suswerda, our songwriting and composition professor. Up next, I promised I'd bring him back, Dr. Daniel Lin. He accompanied Dr. Jason Thompson at the very top of this webinar, uh, and it's time for him to have his little solo moment. He's going to be playing a bit of Chopin, uh, Etude in C sharp minor, opus 10, number 4.
Does anybody want to watch that again? It was just so good. I've watched that video five times preparing today, and every time makes me smile. We're going to switch gears uh, here, and we're going to switch over to a Q&A with our student panelists. Uh, we have several students uh, who have agreed to join us today, representing most of our majors, and we have everything from freshman to senior. Um, and so they're here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, if you've thought of any questions, or if any questions pop up, please drop those into the Q&A below. Uh, before we get to your questions, I'm going to have each one of them go through and mention why they chose Indiana Wesleyan University. At some point, they were where you are trying to decide if Indiana Wesleyan was right for them. And so I'm going to have them go one by one and explain talk just briefly why they chose Indiana Wesleyan University. So I'm going to ask Miss Gracia Gormong, who's a senior music education major, if she will go first for us. Hi guys, uh, my name is Gracia and I'm, like you said, a senior music ed major, um, choral specifically. And I chose Indiana Wesleyan because I had siblings who previously went here but if it wouldn't have been for them and I wouldn't have already been visiting, I know the first time that I came, I just sensed um, a really deep community here at Indiana Wesleyan. Like people were genuinely kind to each other. And unlike some of the other state schools that I had visited that felt um, kind of cold and I felt like a number, I truly knew that the professors and the students that I talked to cared about me as a person. And that mattered greatly to me as I chose this place. And it's become even more true throughout the years. Um, so I'm Anna Wright. I'm a sophomore vocal performance major. And um, I chose IWU. I actually was dragged along on a visit with my younger sister. And I was like, I'm not going to go here. I wanted to go to IU. Um, but then the whole time I was here, like Gracia said, I just sensed that community. And everybody that I talked to was so nice. And all the professors here, um, I actually didn't meet any music professors because I was on like an art visit. Um, but everybody that I spoke to was so welcoming and they had such great things to say about the university. And after I left, I could really tell, I was like, oh, I think I'm supposed to go there. And I remember like crying in the van on the way home because I wanted to go to IU. And I was like, I don't think that's where the Lord wants me to go. So, but yeah. Hey guys, uh, my name is Mark Beltman. I'm studying worship arts and music ministry. I'm a senior. Um, and a big reason that I came, uh, I originally heard it about IWU from uh, my pastor. So I decided to visit um, and I met some of the faculty. I just fell in love um, with the faculty. I got to know a little bit more about my program. Um, also fell in love with that. Um, and I had a lot of friends that were already, either already here or were planning on coming as well. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited that I chose this um, and that I'm here and I've almost done studying uh, and would highly recommend it. Um, it's a great way for you to also grow your personal fa uh, faith in God here as well. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Uh, next, let's hear from Miss Joelle Johnson, our freshman representative music therapy major. Joelle, why'd you choose Indiana Wesleyan? Hi, um, I'm Joelle Johnson, again, as you said, and I'm music therapy freshman. Um, I decided to come to Indiana Wesleyan, uh, mainly, well, for the first reason, my parents uh, met here, so they're alumni, and so is my sister, and so this place has always felt like home to me, and I live really close, so that was one thing that really impressed me, and I just, I love being here every time I would visit and every time I would visit my family and like visit my sister when she was here and it kind of just fit everything because it had um, music therapy that was um, one thing that was super important to me and I just love like everybody else has said the community and um, the fact that I feel like I can worship my lord and savior in public and not have to feel like I have to keep it with me and it's just nice to be in a place where I can worship and have that really nice community, like everyone else has said. So I'm Taylor, I'm a junior music ed major. Um, I actually came to Indiana Wesleyan for the first time, kind of on a whim. Um, I really needed to audition for schools. And so I came here, I didn't really know what to expect. I auditioned on um, Spotlight Day and I felt like all of the professors really cared about me and they really wanted me to succeed. And so it was really, I felt really comfortable here um, and it was the first school that I actually auditioned at. And I remember leaving and being like, wow, I really think I'm supposed to go here, but it kind of felt too good to be true to assume that the first college that I went to was where I wanted to go. 
but I have no regrets in my decision. And I'm really glad that I did come here. Up next, Mr. Christian Slaven, a saxophone player. Christian, why did you choose Indiana Wesleyan? Uh, yes, so to echo off what everyone else has been saying, this was um, just like Taylor, this was my first visit here of any of the campuses that I had visited. And it did have a sense of, is this too good to be true? And then I went to other ones and then I came here after hearing about it from my friends. And every visit I came back through just auditions and other visits, I, I just couldn't help but feel this was a place for me. And um, the faculty were just enormously, immensely uh, kind and just brought an impact to my art and how I felt about campus. Hi, everyone. My name's Haley. Uh, I'm a senior this year and songwriting and psychology is my focus, like Master Chin said. Um, to echo what everybody else is saying, I think the community is a huge part of Indiana Wesleyan, but for me specifically, what drew me to the university was uh, I was really concerned with getting a good community surrounding me, but not sacrificing academic rigor as well. And one of the first things I picked up on my visit was that uh, this school is not going to go easy on me. And that was the best thing uh, that I could have gotten from that visit, that initial spotlight day visit. Um, I immediately was challenged in the best ways possible. And I think faculty and students both do a really good job holding you accountable and pushing you to be the best musician that you can be, um, as well as upholding integrity and character and um, all the things that make a good musician all in all as well. So I think that's what really drew, uh, drew me to the university. Thanks, Haley. I'm going to open up the conversation to any one of our panelists and ask them, what is something that you think prospective students should know that admissions might not tell you? This might be music division specific or otherwise, uh, but what's something that you think these prospective students should know about Indiana Wesleyan or our division that admissions might not share? Anybody want to share? Anybody? Anybody? Um, something that I think I heard a lot freshman year was don't overcommit yourself. And I was encouraged a lot to like only try out like a couple things you don't want to be overwhelmed that kind of thing i didn't really find that to be true and i think my best advice for you guys would be try as many things as you think you want and then you can kind of figure out what you really love freshman year don't be hesitant to join multiple things in multiple areas of the campus and give plugged into different types of ministries and different interests of yours so that you don't hone in too specifically into one type of person or one thing. I think, think you can make the best friends in air, in all sorts of areas and really grow in that way. Um, so one thing that I thought about a lot when you asked this question, um, when I was in high school, a lot of my teachers told me that like college professors are going to be like essentially monsters and like they don't really care about like your personal life and they're just there to teach you and they don't really care how you do or if you show up or anything but um when I came here like that was one thing that was really heavy on my heart and when I came here I learned that that was like massively wrong and every single professor that I've met cares deeply about you and how you are feeling personally and how you're doing academically and I know that at least at Anita Wesleyan, there are a lot of professors that um, care about your life. And if you like, they're more than welcome to hear your story and to be there for you in like times that you have like trials or things that you're going through, they're more than welcome. Like they're definitely willing to help you through that and even like go out for coffee with you. And that's, that's something that's really helped me through um, my first year here. And I think that's true even outside of the music division that um, professors here, at least here, do really care about the students and that they're, um, they, they just, they really care about everybody. And I think it's, it's nice and it adds to that community sense that um, everybody's been talking about. So a uh, fun fact about me is I'm also an RA on campus. So uh, you've heard the word community scattered uh, throughout answers and you're gonna hear it a bunch when you get on campus. Um, but I'm very passionate about the community here. And I think initially on your visit, uh, admissions does a really good job of illustrating all the different opportunities that we have to get plugged into community or groups or organizations on campus. And 
Um, as much as that is helpful, I also think that we don't put a bunch of emphasis on how to go after those opportunities and how to find uh, what fits well for you. I personally had a lot of freshmen this year who really just didn't know what was going on a lot of the time, didn't know what groups and clubs were available to them. So I think my word of advice would be don't be afraid to go seek out those opportunities um, for yourself. A lot of the times those com communities and those opportunities don't come to you, uh, but maybe speaking from a RA bias perspective here, ask your RA, ask an upperclassman, um, if you're struggling to find a spot or something where you feel like you have people surrounding you and supporting you, we do have a lot of on-campus activities and ways to get plugged in. Um, they can just be a little difficult to find at times. So don't be afraid to reach out to people who have been here longer or um, are employed by the university to give you that kind of information. I think you won't regret it. Thanks, Haley. Before you run away, uh, can you tell us what an RA is and what an RA does? Oh, yeah. So a resident assistant, um, oh gosh, I don't have my job description, you know, memorized top to bottom, but um, when you get to campus, you will have an RA on your floor in the residence hall that you live in. Um, they are, I don't want to say in charge of the floor, but uh, they're there to facilitate community. They're there to um, serve you in ways that they can and that are healthy and um, just to, I don't want to see like be your guide or anything, but um, it is an individual on your floor that you have access to at all times. If you have campus questions, if um, things aren't going well in your room, like maintenance requests and things like that, um, we take those. So we do take care of the hall. Um, you also have a resident director. So every building has an RD over uh, the whole hall. And they are also incredibly accessible and love to connect with students as well, especially in the freshman dorms. That's why they choose to be there. Um, so uh, yeah, make sure you reach out to your RA when you first get to campus, because uh, they're probably good at their job, which is why they got hired. So yeah. Uh, Mark, will you tell me, you've been here for a few years, you're a senior now, uh, what's the best thing about the Division of Music at Indiana Wesleyan University? Um, yeah, so I'm a big fan of um, the ensembles. Um, I'm a part of Corel. Um, I haven't been a part of really any of the other ones, but um, the ensembles are amazing, um, every, every one of them. And along with that, um, I not this past year, but all, all of my first three years, um, I've been a part of the uh, ministry teams. Um, did you do they know what the ministry teams are? Why don't you go explained? ahead and talk about those? Okay, yeah. Um, so there's a couple different uh, ministry teams. Um, there is currently there's Rejoice, um, his instrument, and is there, is there another Redeemed. one? Redeemed. Redeemed. Um, so these are different music uh, ministry teams that go out to different churches. Um, throughout the semesters um, and just minister. Um, they're a great opportunity um, to, to, to share God's word with those um, in, the, in the community. Um, and it's a great way to also make a little um, money. Um, but I would, I would highly recommend that. Um, it's for both instruments and vocalists. Um, I feel like we've definitely talked about uh, the professors a lot. But on top of just them really caring about you as people, they are some world-class um, professionals. And so you have these people who really care about music and, and their specific field matched with the fact that they really care about you as people. And so it helps create an environment where you feel like you can really be prepared for whatever it is that you're going into, whether it be teaching or therapy or performing, anything, um, because they really want to see you succeed. And they also have the knowledge to really help get you there. So it definitely helps, especially if you're like um, struggling. I credit all of my love for theory now to Doxis Horta because I did not have a good experience in high school and I was really scared about it when I got here. And so he definitely helped, but like all of the professors are willing to do things like that for you. And so it helps you feel way more prepared and knowledgeable by the time you get to your you know, junior, senior out into the real world um, profession. Um, I think personally for me, it has been just the atmosphere and the engagement between the different students and just your uh, um, your family of students here, like I said. 
um, on campus with you. I know so many times the people that I hang out with the most outside of classes is the, are these other music students. They become your family in and outside of the classroom and they help you through anything, whether it's schoolwork or just personal life problems. And it has been um, helpful for me as a person just to grow. Someone asked the question of if the opera for next year has been announced uh, and it has not yet. Uh, and that's because it, it hasn't been decided yet. Part of the reason that isn't happening is because um, it has been difficult for us to get rights on certain things because of COVID. So we're still waiting. Uh, we have a couple ideas uh, and we're waiting to figure out the rights and if we what, what we can do in those areas. Uh, as many of you know, um, things on Broadway have been shut down and, as well as some of the touring things. So some of the things that have been considered are crossover into, into more of a Broadway style and have been uh, tough to get the rights on. So we're not sure at this point. As soon as we know, we'll be sure to post it on our social media. Um, so we do have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash IWUMUS. You can also type in Indiana Wesleyan University Division of Music in the Facebook search bar. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram at IWUMUS. And the last question, uh, Mr. Flanagan, I'll have you answer this one uh, publicly. We don't actually have a, an applied student representative to answer this question, but what is the applied major? The applied... The applied major is a really helpful um, degree if you're looking at doing music, but also double majoring. So if you are looking at, uh, I, want to, I want to major in music, but also um, major in ministry, or I want to major in uh, business. So those, the applied degree allows you to do that because it doesn't require as many hours as the Bachelor of Music does. This is a Bachelor of Arts in Music, which is a difference in, in just the amount of credits you have to have. Um, I will tell you, the applied degree is basically what the, the, the music portion of a music education degree. It's very similar. So the music ed take kind of an applied degree and then the education classes and that, get, that puts the music ed together. Um, they're, they're incredibly similar. So that gives you an idea how that works. Um, if you're looking at being a musician and wanting to double major, that's a good way to go. If you come in and say, well, I wanna be a performance major and double in something, that's much harder to do because of the amount of credits you're expected to take. You don't have any um, electives to be able to dabble in other areas. Great. Thank you, Mr. Flanagan. Uh, I want to say a quick thank you to um, all of the faculty that sent in performances for you guys to view and as well to our student panelists. Um, that's all we have planned with the exception of one final performance uh, from Professor Todd Williams. I thought jazz was a good way to go out. As soon as Professor Williams is done playing, we will put up on the screen for you um, contact information, our email addresses for Mr. Flanagan, myself, and our division secretary, Lori. And then we'll also share um, the email addresses of our full-time faculty. Um, so if you're looking for specific people to contact, whether it be uh, any of the performers you saw today or uh, any of the professors who you didn't see perform today, those will be shared uh, at, well, as well at the end. So thank you so much for attending today. Uh, hopefully this has been informative. Hopefully it's been a little bit fun. Hopefully you've enjoyed hearing some great music. Um, we'll leave you again with Professor Todd Williams uh, playing his saxophone, and we hope you have a great day. Thanks, everybody.